Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Less Than 60 Miles. This is a game designed by Marco Cimino and Fabrizio Vianello. This is published by Thin Red Line Games and it just landed on my doorstep the other day so I want to do a quick unboxing for you so you can take a look at it. There are still copies available. This is a small print run. It's bigger actually than 1985 Under an Iron Sky or their first one. They had to actually do two print runs. I think it was a total of 400 uh, by the time it was said and done. They did 200 initially and then 200 on the reprint and I believe this one has about 800 on the uh, print so uh, if you missed out on it you uh, can definitely place an order. This game has no back of the box text so instead what I'm going to do is give you the breakdown of what's going on in this game here based on the BGG entry. It says here 0400 Zulu time July 24th 1985 three Warsaw packed armies cross the inner German border and advance at full speed into the Fulda Gap. U.S. 5th Corps supported by the West German 5th Panzer Division start executing op plan 33001 the centag defense plan prepared and refined for decades to accomplish the apparently impossible task of stopping 4000 soviet tanks before they reach the rhine Taking its roots from SPI Central Front and NATO Division Commander, Less Than 60 Miles is the first of an operational simulation series focused on command, control, and communication. All the elements of modern mechanized warfare are covered. Chemical and nuclear weapons, attack helicopters, engineers, electronic warfare, counter battery fire, ribbon bridges, army doctrines, reconnaissance, close air support coordination, and more. Several typical war game mechanics have been reinterpreted, and both sides will fight three equally dangerous foes. The enemy, their own plan, and time. Even a simple action can quickly turn into a disaster when facing an opponent using more efficiently the real key to victory. The OODA loop theorized by John Boyd in the early 80s and used today as the basis for several military doctrines. It goes on to say that this is the first module of the C3 series that will cover the whole NATO Warsaw Pact conflict in Central Europe. Uh, let's also give you a rundown of the components. You get a 90, 98 by 55 centimeter matte plasticized map and that is uh, covers a whole U.S. 5th Corps area of responsibility. 1,000 5 8 inch matte plasticized counters, 40 action and event cards, 35 page rule book, 30 page scenario and designer notes book, two charts and tables booklets, and two 10 sided dice, as well as a bunch of Ziploc bags. All right, so let's take a look inside and see what you get inside less than 60 miles. We've got our deck of cards. We've got 2D10, some baggies. We've got our scenario and designer's notes. Rules of play, got some play raid cards and the play raid booklets, our counters, and the map. So I'll set up the map and then we'll take a look at everything individually. All right, so this is the map that comes at less than 60 miles. It is the area of operations for the 5th Corps, East Germany to your right and West Germany to your left. It goes from Hellebad up in the northeast to Hilberghausen down in the southeast. Over to the west, you have Ludwigshafen and Andernach is the borders, I should say, for the map. But this is a very... Uh, it's an interesting map because it's got this plastic coating to it, uh, which it's not uh, like, like it says in the description, it's plasticized. So I think it'll be good and safe from spills, which is nice, although I'm not going to go try it out by dumping uh, anything on it. But I do like uh, that for durability's sake. The colors are, are pretty vibrant. Uh, they're pretty, they got some dark, really dark areas. And that's where I think it makes the text kind of disappear a little bit. Uh, it's not as easy to see them uh, across the map as you'd like. It's not that it's bad, it's it's readable, it's a really pretty map, but I just kind of feel that sometimes in some spots the, the text gets lost in the darker areas of the terrain, the colors used for the terrain. Uh, overall, I think it's a, it's a really great map, it's just with those uh, little caveats to it. But let's take a look at the rest of the components that come with the game. All right, so this game comes with a bunch of player aids, we'll take a look at them now. We've got our ground combat chart. This has the uh, combat differentials, combat support points, ground combat sequence, weather combat modifiers, chemical warfare combat modifiers, combat modifier summary, train combat modifiers, obstacle combat modifiers over here, as well as electronic warfare effects. Uh, these are single-sided. You have your US 5th Corps order of battle here and the Soviet order of battle here time track. It also covers the NATO points track and the Warsaw points track. These uh, eight page booklets will cover all of the extra tables that you'll have. Each player will have one. You have your movement table here. It goes over your terrain effects and their cost and effect on mechanized and leg 
units and then you have additional movement costs, force march table, weather table, posture chart, because posture is everything in this game, whether you're in uh, the type of movement you're in, the posture obviously like full assault, march assault, assault, tactical, and how that affects play, orders chart, you can have different orders, uh, division move, brigade move, brigade assault, battalion refits, battalion defend, so on and so forth. And then we have bombardment table and interdiction table here, AA fire table and bombardment die rolls, detection levels, ground combat table, attacker combat support, defender combat support, terrain combat modifiers, obstacle combat modifiers, and then your ground combat results. And then you have disengagement table, air points table here, and electronic warfare, intelligence, uh, resupply, and then you have nuclear attack, the unit legends as well as a breakdown of the unit types, the unit sizes, and the nationalities. In the sizes, it goes from company up to front size, and we have East Germans, Soviet Unions, West Germans, and the United States. And the breakdown of the unit you have here, uh, the attack and defense, the two numbers on the bottom. The type of unit, obviously, it has a combination of a silhouette as well as the NATO marking. And then you have, uh, whether it's amphibious or not, cadre, parent headquarters uh, formation, what the size of the unit is, the designation, the formation color, and then uh, we're back to type. So that's a look at those. Then we have these cards that, take a quick look at here. They are, there are two different decks in this, I believe. Yes, you have the NATO and the Soviet deck, Warsaw Pact deck. All right, we'll take a look at some of these cards here. This is a uh, Warsaw Pact card. This is North Ag Crisis. Play at the beginning of the air phase for the next four turns. NATO air points rolls for the following top headquarters have an additional negative three DRM. US 5th Corps, US 7th Corps, and West German 2 Corps. Then you have Situation Normal all left up. Uh, play at the moment during NATO, play at any moment during the NATO movement phase. A single US 5th Corps chosen by the Warsaw Pact must stop and cannot expend movement points during the current movement phase. So this is a great way to throw down on your opponent and stop them from moving any uh, further. Code broken during the EW phase. Central Front Headquarters intelligence attempts have an additional plus two DRM for two turns. Uh, human, uh, luck, air superiority, air surge, uh, Spetsnaz raid. Uh, we've got air mobile assaults, air strikes. Then for the NATO, we have mass desertions. Uh, played during the Warsaw Pact, Movement phase, NATO rolls a die for up to five combat units of East German Third Army. And if you roll a one through three, no effect, four to eight, increase attrition by one, and nine and 10, it increases in attrition by two. And then you have the same snafu uh, that the Warsaw Pact has. Uh, it looks like they're pretty much all very similar. Uh, air mobile forces, deep strike, special forces, same thing. So yeah, they look pretty equivalent and uh, Bruce Garrick will be happy with that. It's got wild we weasel. All right, so let's take a look at the counters that come with the game. We have US forces, uh, West German forces. We've got some admin counters here. Uh, Real quick, I just want to kind of zoom in and see if I can get some light on these. You can see they've got kind of a little bit of a sheen to them. You may or may not be able to see that, but it's very, it's matte, so it doesn't look at all uh, shiny. Uh, it's probably not picking up any uh, glare off the lights, which is actually good because it shows you that this is not glossy. It is matte, just like it says, and it, the plasticized counters, they feel really good. Nice white core, and uh, I think they it makes the colors very vibrant, very easy to pick up and very easy to read. and. Uh, Nice size counters, 5 8 inch. I, I love that size. So take a look at the rest of them here. Here's your Soviet units and your East German units. And then we've got more admin counters. More here, more here, and some more here as well. But that is a look I really like. I'm not a big fan of orange necessarily, but uh, this is, uh, th th this these orange counters, they have, with the color scheme that they used and the printing uh, method they used along with the plasticized thing, it almost has like a 3D look to it when you see it in person. So check that out. You'll see what I'm talking about when you get your copy, but really like the quality of these counters. You got six counter sheets of them, so you got plenty of box space too to store them, so that's a good thing. All right, so let's take a look at the rule book that comes at less than 60 miles. It is a 35-page rule book. 
starts off with the introduction overview, breaks down your game equipment, everything that you get with the game, and then you have your general rules, definition of terms, fractions, how they work, and then the sequence of play, which is weather phase, events phase, air points phase, and then player one action phase, and then player two action phase. And then we have postures that explains how postures work and how they get changed. Then we get into the stacking movement, calculating movement cost, disengagement, river crossings, Warsaw Pact advance access, attrition, attrition points, headquarters, headquarter reconstruction, command points, attached headquarters, orders, how they work, uh, completing an order, ground combat, and your combat modifiers, combat support, artillery, breakthrough, advance after combat, uh, air points, helicopters, bombardments, uh, interdiction, anti-aircraft fire, detection, electronic warfare, signals intelligence, uh, and then optional rules for intelligence, SIGINT and recon intelligence, chemical warfare, and the different types of chemical warfare there are. You, know, you can use bombardment, interdiction, persistent gas, initiating nuclear warfare, delivering nuclear weapons, and resolving nuclear attacks, nuclear contamination, integrated battlefield is an optional rule, weather, supply, tracing supply lines, defensive works, uh, supply hubs, bridges, there are permanent bridges, bridge mining, ribbon bridges, and panel bridges as well. Then you have reinforcements, uh, event cards, and the action cards at the end, and that is the end of the rule book. Then we have our scenarios and designers notes, which we'll take a look at next. This is a 27 page book. It has the scenarios and the campaigns that come with the game. There are three scenarios and two campaigns. You have additional scenario rules, uh, such as civilian panic uh, surprise level, geographical objectives, 11th hour is the first scenario. And that is the one that is recommended to start with. Steps of Our Fathers is the second one. It gives you the OOBs and additional rules that you may need. Scenario three is Spearhead. And then we get into the Day That Never Comes, Campaign One, and then along with its order of battle, and then we have Campaign Two, One Minute, to midnight, which is the, I would assume, the big one. And then we have designer's notes about confusion and disorder, attrition and fatigue, movement terrain, posture, combat, uh, and all the way down back of the book where the bibliography is. And that is a look at everything that comes inside of Less Than 60 Miles from Thin Red Line Games. If you are into modern what-if conflicts of the 80s uh, between NATO and Warsaw Pact, this is definitely a game you're going to want to check out. And uh, I hope that answers any questions you guys have for it. The game is available now, so you're going to have to go to their website, place the order. But do it quick because these games do tend to send a sell out pretty, pretty fast. But they do have about 800 copies, so it won't be as super fast as the first one. But don't delay on it because you uh, will miss out. But hope that helps you guys out. And if you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.